hi guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to be talking about these bits of kit here this is a mass airflow sensor um this particular one you'll find in your toyotas and hondas typically um when these things um get damaged or stop working properly they, for instance you can have a you can end up having a, a lean mixture of fuel in the car um, because of the inappropriate uh, uh, ratio of the airflow that is being picked up by this sensor. So if these guys are defective, you typically have problems such as uh, lean fuel mixture. Um, you might have a rich fuel mixture. But for those who don't know, a lean fuel mixture means that you have got uh, a, a very small amount of fuel then a rich fuel mixture means that you have an ex excessive amount of fuel going through the engine at any given time compared to the normal fuel ratio um so in an, in excessive cases you might even have an engine store for instance if you've got a very very lean mixture um and and all sorts of other issues but i don't want to uh, I'm going to show you an easy way without having any complex gadgets of testing if these uh, devices are functioning properly. Um, the first thing we need to understand is the components of this thing. Inside there is an IC. You don't have to know much about, about, about what, it, what happens in there. But you've got typically these pinouts and typically you've got five of them. Um, so on over and above that we've got that device there that is actually my thermistor that's the temperature sensor um so as you know um amount of airflow mass airflow basically that flows through at any given time is dependent on density and density is affected by temperature that's why we measure the temperature because the airflow that is detected by the sensor at zero degrees is not if 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 we will typically measure uh, a different reading at let's say forty degrees Celsius because of the changing uh, density in the in the airstream. That's why you've got that temperature sensor there. So apart from the temperature sensor, there is the actual airflow sensor. I'm not don't think you can see well there's that shiny bit inside there that is actually your your your, your flow sensor and it's using this particular one uses a principle of um, thermodynamics in which there's a part of it that is heated by an electric current then there's the sensing bit which detects how much it's the 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 airflow is cooling uh, as it passes through then it converts that to an airflow. So that's the principle of operation of that uh, tiny airflow sensor. So airflow sensor inside temperature sensing device for for mass for density compensation outside. Then you've got a complete um, uh, IC inside as well to convert those readings to flow reading. Then on the pinouts, you, you the sensor is facing this way, um, the sensing bits down, uh, then the head up. Typically, you have, if I count the pins from my right hand side, which is this pin, that becomes my pin one, my pin two, my pin three, my pin four, my pin five. So, typically, uh, from my pin one. I would expect that to be connected to the positive um, electrode of, of 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 the battery voltage basically that becomes your, your positive power supply then for the second that becomes my negative uh, from the power supply then for for the third that becomes reference basically then for pins four and pin number five, that is where I'm going to uh, expect my temperature sensing element. 
one thing that you need to do to test your temperature sensing element in the mass flow meter is your multimeter your multimeter measures your voltage your resistance your current uh, basically the one that i have right now i'm going to use it to measure the resistance that i expect from this temperature sensor because like i mentioned that resistance will vary with temperature uh, that resistance tends to uh, it tends to increase as the temperature decreases then the resistance decreases as the temperature increases so right now i'm about uh, probably around 20 21 degrees celsius i'm in a room that's that's about that much so for the toyota ones these you can look up some some tables online or wherever you you can, you can find some resistance tables for this but typically at around 20 degrees celsius i would expect somewhere in the region of about uh, i would say 2.1 to around 2.7 kilo ohms um kilo being a thousand so that, that, that that's so 2.1 is just 2 is 2.1 times a thousand ohms basically that's 2100 ohms um that's 2.1 kilo ohms so the first thing i'll do i need to check if my sensor is at the correct temperature out put my meter there then i'll check that i've connected yeah this this is my this is the resistance bit the terminals are the, so like i said i say terminal four and five are my my resistance terminal for the temperature sensor so what am i getting there i'm getting about 2.1 so this one is is more or less perfect it is this is what i expect to be the resistance of that I, I get from that sensor right now then to just to demonstrate to you i'm going to heat up um, using a, 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 a blower then you'll notice what happens to that resistance just take note of that reading we say 2.1 kilo ohms then we'll see what happens when you heat it up uh, but you should be careful i'm going to use a blower but I, I need to make sure that i don't damage the sensor just a bit all right so here's my blower there I'm going to set it off. Um, you've got, you've got fifty, hundred, and forty. I'm going to set that up there. That's that's up about between fifty and a hundred. In a car, you, you obviously you, you you don't expect your temperature to be in the hundreds. Um, because that's your airflow uh, temperature. Wait that to heat up a bit. Then you two point one. Then let's see what happens when I heat up. Can you see you've got your a, a, a sharp decline in the kilo ohms so let's see where when it gets to stabilize it should stabilize around 50 degrees it's not dropping anymore so that's about 0 0.85 kilo ohms so that's about 850 ohms it's at that temperature and that's that's more or less uh, expected because at around 60 degrees i expect about i think 650 670 um, ohms which is 0 0.67 kilo ohms um, so that's just a demonstration of how you can test if if this sensor is completely dead, it won't 
that temperature sensor in there. You don't come, you don't respond at all to the uh, variation in the. Let me switch it up. In the temperature, right? So sometimes your 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 temperature sensor is messed up a bit, but not extremely messed up. So it will typically be off by a couple of ohms, uh, but not necessarily 100% off. In this case, that's when we try to cheat the uh, the electronic computer in the car. So let's break down the effect of that faulty temperature sensor there. Assuming that uh, the sensor is measuring less resistance than it's supposed to. If it's measuring less the resistance, it means that it thinks the ambient temperature there, or the, let's say the process temperature there is actually higher than it's supposed to be. When the temperature, when it thinks that the temperature is higher than it's supposed to be, then it means that the density is lower than it actually is. When the density, if that is reading, is lower than it actually is, uh, then what would happen to the uh, air fuel ratio? This would then mean that it's going to, using that ratio, typically a 14 is to 1 ratio, it would mean that the car is, is going to inject less fuel than it's supposed to be. We have more air in reality, but the car thinks there is less air uh, getting into the engine, therefore, we have, we're going to have a very, very lean uh, uh, fuel mixture. So, if I've got that systematic error of a lower resistance than normal, I know from my high school uh, science class that what I need to do is I can compensate using a resistance. This guy uh, typically I would start off with a 0. 0.5 kilo ohm resistor. Then what I'll do is I'll put it in series with the circuit. This is known as a, a WACO connector, by the way. Um, just for experimental purposes, b before you do anything, before putting a permanent fix on your engine, what you can do is you can cut off the wires, the wires coming to these terminals, right? If I want to increase the resistance measured from these terminals, what I'll do is I'll put this resistor in series with one of the wires. So if I cut it off, then assuming this, we're well not on the actual car, but assuming this will be a wire that will be coming from one end of your, of the, of the harness that plugs in there, what I'll do is I'll simply hook it up there then what I'll then do is I'll put up my resistor like that. Then get another connector. This is a temporary fix because it will be experimental to see how your engine will behave. Um, with this resistance and if you're not satisfied you can always change the resistance to a higher or lower value depend depending on your result so in effect these two wires represent the the single wire on pin number five of your harness so this represents me cutting off that wire then putting this resistance in series ideally if you've got something known as a well a variable resistor um that's got a knob in which you can you, you you can vary the resistance by turning that knob uh it becomes easier for you because you can experiment with that while you're turning your resistance but as for my case if if i don't have that i'll just if i've got a a, a pack or a resistor pack um that i found in my garage i can just plug put this on put it off by just taking these connectors on and off as i please until I'm satisfied. 
but typically you'd start off, start off like I said with a 500 ohm but this is not a 500 ohm by the way um, I'm just demonstrating this for you what you'd do in reality um, so you start off with that check the performance of your, of your car then if there is more resistance than it is supposed to be measured by that temperature sensor what you do then instead of cutting one wire on terminal 5 or terminal 4 you need to cut both wires off then what i'll do is i'll do something called a parallel connection meaning that this this resistance instead of being in series with one wire from the ecu to the sensor it becomes cross crossed between these two terminals terminal number four and terminal number five so you can just cut the wire then bridge the resistor between those two wires in other in simpler layman's terms you are still allowing the circuit to measure from those two pins but by paralleling the resistor i'm simply bridging between the two uh, between the two pins so the sensor is still working but the effect of that paralleling, it has the effect of lowering the resistance. Then the effect of a series connection through one wire of the harness is the effect of increasing resistance. So that's how you just play around with the um, with the temperature sensor on your mass airflow. Some engines have got this separate uh, mounted elsewhere. Then some of them have got two. You've got one that's mounted elsewhere, then you've got another one on the muff. Then some only have one outside, then the muff is just your 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 your, your flow measurement device. So in, 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 in summary, that's all I wanted to show you today. Um I'll Dave love to show you on an actual car, but it's been a busy schedule for me lately and it's a miracle that I actually managed to pull off <laughs> one of these uh, videos. I apologize for, I know it's, it's been a long time since I've done any of these videos. Thanks for watching. Keep tuned. Bye.